On this episode of the Home Studio Hangout, I'm joined by my good friend, John McLucas. John is an incredible producer and mixing engineer from Los Angeles, California, specializing in vocal-centric pop music. We talk about his stint as a fully nomadic music producer, traveling the country and working with a ton of people all over the place in different studios and different home setups. We also talk about him getting a producer manager and what that looks like and the relationship there, as well as some of the cool opportunities that that's kind of brought for him recently. If you've ever had the dream of traveling the country and working fully remotely as a music producer, I think you'll really enjoy this conversation with John McLucas. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Home Studio Hangout Podcast, where we explore what it's like building, running, and working out of a home studio with your hosts, Joshua Matatek, Andrew Simmons, and many guests in different areas of the music industry. Welcome back to the Home Studio Hangout Podcast. I'm your host, Drew. Josh is not here with me today in another session, but today with me, we have uh, a returning guest, somebody that we haven't talked to in a minute, uh, somebody I haven't talked to in a minute, and it's it saddens me. And so I'm glad that, that you're here, John McLucas, back on the show to talk to us again and hang out for a bit. Uh, welcome. Dude, it's yeah, it's truly been years and it's been feels like lifetimes of of growth and evolution uh since we've last connected. So I'm I'm really excited for it. I know. It. Last be, time as always. for context for people, you were still in LA. Uh you were doing you were kind of leaning into the content stuff, I think, at that point a little harder. Uh and you were about to go and voyage onto your um your excursion around the country. You were doing a lot of fly dates for production from what I remember at that point. Yes, that was, that was uh, August, 2021. We did about 15 months of traveling. Uh, my now fiance and I for like, it was just honestly just a wild idea. just something I've always wanted to do. Like, like wrote just like, do the nomadic thing. Yeah. Uh, do that. That's that very sensationalized piece you see on social media where it's like, I'm not bound by location. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. free. I am. And, and give it a wind. shot. See, see what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think a lot of people would, would, it's very idealized. And also to be fair, hardest to do in our industry um <laughs> well, it's very hard to do very very hard to do like so uh, how did you even so one what was the impetus of the thought and number two how did you make it practical so the first the first thing was i think we were like a little itchy from covid shutdown yeah. energy and kind of feeling like you're in la but you can't do a lot of the fun stuff in la and i've just always I, i've always enjoyed these like unique challenges and these unique experiences i felt like it could be a great way to in a weird way force you know michelle and i to create a lot of like really unique memories and to also have a lot of different experiences instead within making music as opposed to like going to the same room people kind of come in it kind of every song is totally different but there's there's a certain energy to like oh now i'm going to a studio i've never been to or i'm working out of somebody's living room mm -hmm. and there's kind of this this fun thrill to that so that was a lot of the thought and you know now it's like i don't feel like i need to see any more of our country i'm done with it <laughs> like we've, we've we've seen not in a mean way it's just like no. i've i've seen most all of it's, it it's, did it's crazy just for context it's crazy how much that the country is kind of the same place all the time <laughs> yeah and, and you know what was fun though too about that is like then it also made us probably work a bit harder to find the unique points of different True. places that we would you know, normally as a coastal elite, self-described coastal yep. elite, um, you know, people would be like, why did you spend three weeks in Des Moines, Iowa? And Des Moines kind of slaps. Like it's, it's pretty we found cool, a bunch actually. of great spots. We, we actually had some like really great dates and outings and exploring that I remember really fondly, but you know, kind of, kind of almost, you know, it's the city on the way yep. and we're going to find great ways to enjoy it. So it was really nice to kind of break out of that uh, that bubble for sure. And we did just for context too. people, like we went, we started in, uh, we went back from LA to my family's home near like the Bay area, California. Mm -hmm. 
we went to Austin for two months, then do the holidays and then left after that. And we went down to LA all the way to North Carolina through that route, then all the way up to Manhattan, Buffalo, New York, and then down to like Chicago and all the way back, uh, all the way back up to Vancouver, Canada, and then all the way down to San Francisco. So we literally did the entire, like we did a massive, massive reverse rectangle kind of a thing. Uh, it, it was a lot. It was, it was definitely a lot, but I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. And again, just most unique experiences per month by far yeah was was that road trip uh, the, for better and for worse yeah shout out to your now fiance for putting up with you and your crazy antics and your idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah michelle michelle's a real one yeah She's, uh, <laughs> shout out to michelle for not killing you immediately <laughs> <laughs> this is true um but yeah dude no i i, I think so practically, how did that work? So like from, cause you're, you were going for songwriting projects, but then you were still mixing at that point primarily as well, right? Everything. Full production, <sighs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everything is on the VSX headphones. So the, that, that's how I do all of it. And I, I was like probably one of the first people that bought them like the day that they came out. And I was like, holy shit, these are the headphones that if I like, master them we can leave like we can mm-hmm. go wherever we want so i trained f- for maybe six months to get really good on these headphones and i think i remember find my you, spaces me and, and you having a light conversation about it whenever they first came out as well yeah because i was like these are the because i think even before those came out me and you had had a conversation about like i would love to learn to mix on headphones i've been trying to learn to mix on headphones but like you just don't get enough different context with mixing on headphones that you do with speakers and there's a lot of variables and stuff. Um, these might be the thing. And it seems like it was the thing for you that made that even remotely possible. Oh yeah. Like a hundred percent way more fun, uh, being able to do it all in the headphones. And then it just kind of, cause Michelle works remotely. Mm-hmm. So then we had no, we had no ties to any place. It was just like, all right, well we can go now. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and head out and That's crazy. then there was like half routing two people in the country mm-hmm. and then half people still flying in and i think what was interesting is we kind of planned like what spot we wanted to be like a two bedroom apartment and then we had people like ship in for that time and we had the extra bed and you know then we'd go go to do sessions and yeah. stuff and then ship them back and then certain places where we knew we wouldn't have people so i think in chicago there was one local person and three non-locals that flew in in that month. Wow. Because, you know, it's kind of like, a, we essentially was able to provide the lodging. Yeah. They just had to get there and book a studio and I, you know, coordinated all of that. So whether it was like local or travel, it's kind of more fun, I feel like, for them too, to mm-hmm. have it be somewhere new and interesting. One guy wanted to do, you know, we did Santa Fe, so we got like a really cool Airbnb up in the mountains uh, and it was like snowing and get in the hot tub at night after sessions yeah. and just worked out of the living room. So lots of different, um, really cool locations and vibes and energies. And it was a logistic hellscape, but it was really fun. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it was logistically. It was wild. That, that was, I guess that was the next question is like, were these, f- you said you were booking some studios, you were renting out some spots. How many of them were studios? How many of them were you just fully working out of an Airbnb? Or was it like always you booked a studio? Or what did that look like? I would opt to get a studio pretty much. Sure. Most of the time. Uh, budget permitting. Like I, that, that's always what I'd rather do. But sometimes, you know, the, when the truly wanted to go to Santa Fe and do more of a like, you know, nature-based escape sure then it's like all right well we're doing the airbnb so it was just a lot of conversation about that but i, I do always prefer having a cleaner <laughs> yeah, yeah you know more saturated nice vocal coming in whenever i can yeah but i certainly won't berate them for wanting to um catch a vibe do some kind of an escape or being like yeah 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 but yeah, ca- catch whatever the vibe is so yeah uh maybe 80 percent studio 20 percent out of their home or my home or, you know, somebody's 
somebody's spare space where, wherever that ended up being yeah. and setting up a little fort. That's really cool. And the uh, was it just in your car? Just- yep, it was in a Kia Soul. It was me, Michelle, and our cat, <laughs> and uh, everything everything that we lived out of was, was out of that Kia Soul. Surprisingly spacious. Like it can actually fit a whole drum kit and like two bases, because when we used to have my drum kit. Uh, it could fit in the case in the touring cases. Wow. It fit in there. So it's a little more spacious than people believe it to be. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, you didn't travel with any like extra gear other than like your laptop, your headphones and your interface stuff really. Right. You travel with any mics or anything like yeah, that? Yeah. Laptop, headphones, interface, the, um, the slate MO one mic. Okay. And then a few, a few sets of, uh, moving blankets it's for like, a la carte good enough dampening Vocal to enhance the spot. space. Yeah. 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 It's like, get some, get some clips, cl- clip this blanket on this lamp to that lamp mm-hmm. and then put it and, and just do what we need to do. So yeah. that was pr- pretty much it between that and tossing mattresses on the wall and, um, all the weird home base solutions, you know, and again, I told people this too, like th- th- this is not, uh, they didn't come in expecting me to have a ten thousand dollar vocal chain, and then I was like, "Put this cushion here." Like, yeah, I knew. I, I was like, "Hey, transparency. This is what's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna sound great, but just like, this is what this means." Yeah, if we're gonna no, work out of your living room. for sure, for sure. And, and but it, I, people were people were very cool with it. You kind of explain that in the process, though, right? It's like it. Uh, they know going into it if you get the studio. You'll get this in the environment and you'll you'll have access to these things and it's this much money. And if you don't, you have to make these like compensations for that for the process. So it's yeah. kind of inherently a- a- everybody's very, very clear uh, what the stitch is. So it, there's no no feels either way. Yeah. Did uh and I guess the fun part about working in different studios all the time is you got to try a bunch of different stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, it was super fun. Like one guy who got a bunch of cool guitars, and then of course I got to pick them up and yeah, play around. Why not? And another guy who uh, has, you know, like a really, you know, interesting pair of compressors that I get to play with and dial in and go like, oh, this is interesting. Like noted, like yeah. So it was really fantastic. Uh, was there anything? Loved that, the journey. Was there anything that shocked you that you were like, I didn't expect to love this so much, or I or I expected to love this more? Ooh, I think maybe the biggest thing that shocked me was how much I think the home studio, like, especially like content creators who are always like, oh, hey, you don't need good gear to get going. Ah, like, like, which is true. Sure. And, and they'll almost go to this point of like expensive gears for stupid people get cheap mic uh but get good mixer and win and i made a uh, how much i made a post on that and hating on focus right cheap focus right interfaces and basically being like you can get better conversion for roughly the same price you get better preamps for roughly the same price just don't get the stuff that is bad basically um yeah and i got a lot of hate for that but oh well <laughs> it, it it's it's okay cuz yeah. i also I think like it's very hard for people to understand the difference between like, you know, a mid two channel interface and like a beautifully done $15,000 vocal chain where it comes in and then the mix is literally like 12 K boost, maybe eight K talk 400 Uh, slightly or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just like little scoops, tweaks, touches. And then I'm like, well, it's kind of mixed. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, I, I will send this home to you versus like the ones you record at home where it's like, yo, I can't, I can't give this to you. Yeah. 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 Cannot, cannot send this off. Um, and, and I think people really undervalue what a great chain does to a performance, what a great chain does to the excitement listening back, what a great chain does to inspire new ideas mm-hmm. where like you can hear everything really clearly and you can be like, oh, okay, great. Well, now that I hear how beautiful the stack can be very you know right off the bat now i have an idea for this or like it's just everything goes so much smoother you know the less band-aids that we have to put on down the line which i know is stuff we understand yeah um and is really great to kind of you also get so used to having to do it 
and uh, yeah, not having to do it, I'm sure is very refreshing. Oh man, it's it's incredible. And the other part too, which is something I didn't come to understand either till I was in these rooms maybe really this year is like doing writing sessions with an engineer in the room who's getting his day rate while we write. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Like it, it's it's things that when I've always had to be the engineer and the producer, mm-hmm. like and co me and potentially co-writing at the same time, I don't realize until I'm like, wow. This is incredible. I'm just like, all my energy is focused on this phrase and Very nothing freeing. else. So, so th- there's those couple of things. It's so freeing. It's so freeing to hear things beautifully. It's so freeing to have hands off. Of course, that luxury is something that, you know, is a luxury and is something I've enjoyed recently. But sure. uh, by far on that trip specifically, it's like, oh, having a great chain makes them sing, but it's an upward spiral for everybody. And I, and I, wish not only for people who haven't experienced it to be able to go to a good studio, but to go to a good studio with the right people in it. Mm-hmm. Cause I think more often than not, they end up with like some greasy incumbent cargo shorts, misogynist <laughs> drone of a douche yeah. at the, at the helm. And then they're like going to a studio sucks. It's such a bad time. He just cranked my vocal up to sound like T-Pain and then told me I was stupid. And I'm like, yeah. well, yeah, but like, I swear that's not the microphone's fault. Like, yeah. It's, it, and, yeah. and at the same time, I have so much empathy for that experience being so common. For sure. And I hope that if they can find the right people to surround themselves with, they could experience what that feels like to uh, listen back. And it's immediately just 92% done. And it sounds mm-hmm. like a polished record. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a beautiful thing. We we talked with um, – uh, a guy named Darth Moon, like not too long ago, pretty couple episodes ago, probably like ten or ten or twenty episodes ago. Uh, he's he's the engineer for like Lil Durk and um, like a bunch of hip hop guys in Atlanta. He actually just recently took a job as head engineer at um, a Sony facility in uh, Atlanta. So he's like nice big dog. He's big dog now. Uh, super proud of him. But he he was saying a very similar thing of like. The especially at his level, uh, working with these guys that are like really big, they want to come in, they want to make sure it affects how they perform 100% because it affects how clearly they speak, how especially in like hip hop, right? It affects how clear they're saying their phrases, how they're enunciating phrases, where space is in phrases, you know, um, and it's so, especially on vocals, it's so vocal centric, right? We think about it with guitar all mm-hmm. the time. Uh, you want to be able to hear an amp, right? That's obvious, but you don't think about the fact that like- The right kind of amp, the right, the right tone and the exactly. right response. You yeah. want it to feel right, right? But why not the same exact idea with a vocal, right? And at the top, I think like that's where you get the best performances as well. Is having that by far the 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 number one thing on that like on that note. Yeah. Wow. Bad segue, John. Ha. Um, my brain my brain is moving faster than than my no, than good. my head. But wh- when I think about like the biggest reason or the biggest issues I hear with people who record at home on their own and kind of like get by with, as it is, is they don't understand how quietly you can sing and how delicately you can mm-hmm. sing until they're on a nice mic. And then I'm like, just chill it out. And then they, they chilled out. It's not enough. And I'm like, more. Yeah. <laughs> More? Are you sure? And I'm like, watch me. And then yeah. And like, yeah, and then it sounds beautiful and, and tender how they want it. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people haven't ex- played with their one out of ten to three out of ten as much as they could, uh, at least for me in pop, because they weren't singing into a chain that was representative of like the end goal. Yeah. So they would always over sing it and, and operate at a five when really what I needed is a two or a one. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of just something that they had to compensate. So yeah, big fan. That's why all the old old goats do the finger wagging and say, get it right from the source. Yeah. You know, I, I get it. I get it. We, okay, guys, yeah. we, fine. We, we learned. It took us a while, but we learned. Um, yeah. But so that how long did that entire trip last for you as far as like the uh, round stuff so you started uh, mid 2021 <laughs> right first uh first location was september 2021 and then it ended in january 2023 wow so that was i didn't about, realize it was that long 
Yeah, because you know what's crazy, dude? Sometimes you just got to live life and not fucking post about it. Yeah. Like, that. Well, so, that's- sometimes you can just have like beautiful memories with mm-hmm. your partner and beautiful music memories and connect with people and just like not force it to become a vlog. Yeah. Because I realized how much I was, it was literally sucking the joy of the journey out mm-hmm. for me. And I was like, I'm going to put all this in the trash. Like, not all this in the trash. You know, I was like, I'm going to stop doing this and just enjoy it. And, and it was beautiful. So yeah, pe- when I say that, people are like, holy shit, it was that long? It's like, yeah, it was that long. But I just didn't. Yeah. You didn't post? You just didn't. F- it didn't seem like, uh, you know, but just nobody saw you posting that much, right? Like you just didn't yeah. worry about it. And I did notice you were significantly less active, which for me, I would probably vouch to be significantly less active just from a basis of your traveling. Your hand, uh, just the amount of stuff that you have to do. Also, being active online is just like <laughs> that would become significantly an afterthought for me personally. Uh, so it sounds like that's what that was for you as well. Yeah, it, it was nice. I, I, I enjoy the slower social media pace. I'm becoming a a content grandpa at this point. I think. Yeah. No, I feel that. Sometimes you got to go through those phases. We took. Uh, a couple months off the podcast because Josh moved to Atlanta and then I had a child. So valid, you know, sometimes you just got to, sometimes when you be having kids, you just got to take a break. So (laughs) yeah. And it worked out. We came back better, I think. And like, I had more clarity on what I wanted the podcast to be at at that point too. So that was, that was kind of (laughs) nice. Grabbing some seat. Grabbing some seat time. Um, the so you end January twenty twenty three. What made you guys land in Portland? Oh, Portland. So the the long story. Also, I like did something to my back, literally moments before I came on this call. So excuse my if I groan or ache. It's out of pain, not out of fun. Um, <laughs> I have not figured it out yet because it was purely like I texted you on my way. I stood up and then something got weird in my back. And yeah. I was like, oh God. I rolled on it for like a minute and I'm like, I gotta get I gotta I gotta get the answer. Yeah. So but to pick Portland, it was a few things. One, we knew that we wanted to be somewhere that valued uh female reproductive health care mm-hmm. in the way that we wanted it to be yeah. valued. And so that, that eliminated, honestly, a lot of cities that we liked <laughs> to just off, off, off out of the gate. It was yep. like, if we felt, I, I would not want Michelle to be in a position where, uh, we couldn't get the medical work that we've needed to get done because of the law or fear of the law. Mm-hmm. So that was a big thing. Um, and then after that, we had stayed in Seattle for a month and loved the neighborhood we were in. We were kind of in those like heavily gentrified you know you know like let's call it what it is yeah, heavily yeah, yeah. gentrified uh like mid-rise apartment buildings that have a lot of like mixed use things on the first floor mm-hmm. super walkable and i was consuming a lot of urbanist propaganda on youtube about how what a filthy decrepit graveyard of sadness los angeles is and a lot of cities across america and how a lot of like auto lobbying has destroyed the beautiful fabric of towns that used to be so walkable and mm-hmm. welcoming um, and, and other stuff too. And then we get into like zoning laws and NIMBYs and all this bullshit. Yeah. But like that's a whole different thing. So, so long as a lot of those combinations, you're like, wow, we really like this walkable life yeah. style. And Portland is just kind of that perfect middle ground where we were close enough, but like this, na- you know, we're in a really nice neighborhood where we have everything that we really need within a mile walk. We don't really get in the car often. It's just really, really chill, um, very quiet, very easy to get around. And um, so just really met a lot of those things that we wanted to um, kind of be the opposite of the, the drive. And, and yeah. it's been really great, uh, a really great choice. And then unfortunately, things have gone so well in my career. We are moving back to L.A. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, right, unfortunately, I love this place and I'm living here and now I have to leave it. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and to be clear, like, yeah. like, like, oh, oh, boo hoo, things going so yeah, well, yeah, John, yeah, yeah, you, you yeah, must yeah. go. But like, 
But at the same time, it's by far like our best quality day-to-day life, our best um, friend circles, the culture. It's really great. Like nobody in our friend circle does music. So, you know, it's like I'll get the, you know, I'll, I'll get the big news. Like I told you beforehand, cause I know I, or like to say yeah. like, I, I got my first major, my first project with like a major artist, like big name. Yeah. And people are just like, Oh, it's great. Yeah. And then we just move on. Like, it's not, you know, it, it's just kind of nice to not have like, Oh, can I, do you want me to do some work? Do you want me yeah. to add some drums to that one? Or, uh, Hey, do, if you need me to be the assistant, can I, can I just observe? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Like none of this shit. It's just, uh, it's just like living human beings and people mm-hmm. have stuff going on. And it's cool. Bro, so I really love that. It's but, wild how much normal people like just don't care about what we do. It's great. They're either like super intrigued, but they all stay, but like more out of, they're just nice people, but also like they really don't, they don't understand or care at all. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't show my, my circle here of friends. I didn't even show them a single thing of what I did until maybe like a month ago. Cause just, just to get the, cause you know, when you say like, I work yeah. on songs, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. So then I played them like maybe three or four before and afters after we had, cause like our building has like happy hours. Oh, here. no, that's, that's so, really sick. Uh, this is, this is what I mean. The culture is really very different. Sick. Yeah. You, you won't even, you won't even catch a nice apartment complex in WeHo doing a weekly happy hour. Yeah. Like they wouldn't dare. Yeah. That sounds like a loss in profit. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, yeah, so it's, it's really funny. And, and they're like, oh, wow, this is what you do. That's sick. Yeah. And then like later, it's like, yeah, I'm just moving back on, you yep. know, no matter what. So that's been really great. And then um, I'm still emotionally wrestling with going back to LA, but it is the right, it's the right move now. It is with, the right move. Uh, working with management and mm-hmm. a lot of the bigger the opportunities get, the more IRL they want yeah. you to be. It seems that's, that's the trend I notice. Um at least so, at least at this point in your career later it may not matter but like as you keep continue to grow it might not matter quite as much or they may be more willing to be flexible with some of that but i think at this pinnacle point of your career i'm sure it helps to be in person a lot or it's easier to make things happen when you're there yeah i don't have enough clout to be like come to this winery in arizona exactly like, <laughs> exactly um management you brought up management i think that would be an interesting point to talk and we talked about it a little bit before but like how did that come about for you and um to whatever end you want to talk about it like how has been the interaction with management and like working with them what exactly does it look like uh what is exactly does it look like for you and them kind of what is your relationship there like what did they do for you exactly? Kind of, kind of explaining to people like what that looks like. Cause a lot of people don't understand. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do my best. <laughs> so for anybody who's like, like I'll, I'll kind of maybe lay it out a couple of different ways. Yeah. So in general, I've seen management look a few different ways. I think mm-hmm. maybe two different ways as my observations have been one where it's pretty hands-on like, it can management can be as active as, you know, also being in charge of like projects that are going on and helping coordinate your schedule or priorities mm-hmm. of like for in my world, like what mixes I might do this week or what track I need to finish could be that hands on mm-hmm. and doing my email inbox stuff and all that. And, and as hands off as like the more the way that I prefer to be managed and to work with my manage my manager, David is, pretty hands off until like I've talked. No, okay. Excuse me. So that, that's one way where it's really hands on. The second way is like really not bringing anything to me until it's more solidified. Mm-hmm. And then on my end, the people who hit me up directly, I'll then only hand them off to David. Once, you know, we've had a conversation, we feel good energy together. Mm-hmm. So let, let me just elaborate on that really quick. So like, yeah. When somebody hits me up on Instagram, so pretty much anybody independent Mm -hmm. who doesn't have management or label or team of some sort, then I'm usually the one to talk to them first. Mm -hmm. So we'll just take it, have a creative conversation. Then David's the one who will discuss like budget, you know, try to help find how we can, you know, make it work. And he's the guy who handles all that terms, logistics, paperwork, uh, he does all that conversation. So when it's somebody independent, typically I'm just chat, 
come up with like an idea of what we want to do. Yeah. So sometimes it's uh, a single. Sometimes it's they're recording on their own. Sometimes it's this. Sometimes it's that. This person wants to do a writing trip. Uh, so just figuring out what it looks like. And then I hand them off to David from there. And when it's somebody who has a management or is signed, then David's going to be the one to talk to their team, their uh, representative, however that looks. Yeah. And then he'll kind of summarize and bring that to me. So there's kind of a bit of a different flow there. But then zooming out from that, it's sometimes it's really hands-on. Sometimes it's really hands-off. Like the moment it's a yes, he doesn't – I'm a very organized boy. Like when we had our conversation about it, he was like, holy shit, <laughs> you uh, you know what you're doing here, don't you? And I'm like, I do know what I'm doing here. Yeah, we've been doing this. Um, we've been doing this at basically a I, similar level yeah. for a while. <laughs> so as far as like organization goes. <laughs> He he was definitely just surprised at how organized I was and in a complimentary way yeah. where, you know, we were both on the same page that like, obviously I could tell he, he was, I feel like his flow is he wants to be more hands off. He doesn't want to, mm-hmm. you know, have to keep track of a project's progress. And, and I've fortunately have, I guess, the brain that leans towards being super organized, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need to be reminded to, to send a mix or, you know, are you going to do this this week? It's like, if, if there's a deadline, I'm going to meet it. Um, so that stuff was overly aligned. And yeah, so, and, and then I guess to answer your other part of the question, like, so what does it look like for us? That indie kind of, and then like label or management-based split of how things kind of roll in is typically how that's handled. And then uh, day-to-day, he's, you know, a great advisor. He's somebody who can also help recommend when I'm looking at doing uh, a spec gig. Is this the right spec work to take based mm-hmm. on what I have room for? Uh, how should this deal be structured? Hey, there's a, there's a big opportunity on the table. Um, how do I make sure that I'm, you know, being compensated properly and which, you know, he, I, I don't, I say, what should I ask for? But he's the one asking for it, sure. but it's like, you know, he, he's able to essentially feel these larger opportunities uh, and make sure that I'm being covered properly. And then also, because of the network that he has, he's able to then plug me into opportunities that I wouldn't get myself. Mm-hmm. So booking uh, some of the, some great write sessions that are on hold. I believe it's on hold now for a really big K-pop group. Uh, just stuff that I wouldn't get in the room for. Yeah. Otherwise. That it, like is really great. So I'm really, really appreciative of everything that like he can bring that he kind of is pre-existing as well as I know how to handle things that come up for me, uh, wh- whether it's even like the small stuff or the big stuff. It's like, Hey, this is a situation that's come up. Should I be more aggressive or should, you know, do we give them leeway? When do we stop giving them leeway? Um, all, all these kinds of different things. He's just so much more versed in. And uh, I really appreciate that sounding board, the doors that he can open. And uh, honestly, just like, he, he just fucking cares. Like David yeah. just really fucking cares about me, my well being. He we had a phone call and he was, cause he was like, Hey, should I have a right? I could, I, I could book you a writing session. And he, he's like, I can tell from the tone of your voice, you need to rest. Don't you? <laughs> like he's, he, he's also empathetic of me as a human person. Very aware. So that's something I, I have a deep uh, appreciation for. Yeah. And uh, you know, he, he knows my boundaries around like, when I want, to, like, yeah, so we, we just have like really good energy together at this point. Uh, m- maybe one thing that I'll, I want to toss into, I've know I've talked a while, so thank you for no. staring at me while I do it. And <laughs> thanks for staring. Uh, the, the other big point too, because I've actually had a lot of people ask me about management. Yeah. I think you are definitely in that position where like it, it would, could really make sense. For sure. Um, it's, I think th- one of the things that felt like, it was a good fit was the fact that it was, I don't need to be in rooms. I just need to help getting in the right rooms and doors that I couldn't maybe open myself. Yes. Uh, I could, and, and both David and James are very clear about that. They're like, and I've known this too. Yeah. They're like, John, you're going to, you're going to blow up and do the big shit with us or not. Yeah. It's just a matter of how, you know, like us getting you there faster. Yeah. That's all it's doing. Which is beautiful. And I'm like, yeah, you are you are right. Because yeah. I also know I could do this on yeah. my own. But I also know that it would take I could do it faster with Significantly right longer if we, I have to do it yes. on my own because the, I just don't have the capacity. Yeah. Yeah, the J-curve to have somebody who is, you know, taking meetings and starting conversations 
and um, booking sessions and doing all these things. And that it already I just has don't have the, the time for it. It already has the connections that you don't have to build, or has like a quicker way to build the connections that he, they need to build for you. Um, that's a huge part of it. As yeah, well. yeah, it's it's been so so incredibly uh, symbiotic. Is that the thing where it's like yeah. The, the two things feed off each other really well. Yep. Um, yeah. So it's been a great, great fit. I'm really appreciative for how much I've learned, how much I've grown and the way that he's been there in the tough moments where like, I've really needed that support. It is kind of like another part, you know, it's a partnership and yeah. it's a very similar to a romantic partnership that, you know, in a handful of ways. Yeah. And um, I think it's going great. <laughs> we love each other. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> uh, so you're moving back to LA. That's pretty crazy, actually. Um, what yeah. did you? So here's I, this is a random question, and it's just I want to know. Whenever you did your big trip, I assume you like sold everything or got rid of everything and just like lived out of whatever you had in your in your car. Um, buy and then you bought a bunch of new stuff for this. Are you gonna? Are you a guy that's like? We're just going to sell everything again and then buy new stuff at the new place or uh, are you a truck Well, we only guy? have one car now, so we're going to need some kind of a van hmm. that we drive down. The question is, you know, what size of van do we get and then yeah. how much do we keep? Uh, what's What's worth keeping? Um, from all this, I would love to keep the majority of it. And I think we'll keep a lot of what we got. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I think we will, because I think it will be just infinitely more expensive to rebuy a lot of stuff Yeah, down in LA. Oh yeah, that's so true. I'm, that, I'm going to try. That's what I was thinking immediately. I was like, uh, buying furniture in LA sounds like a bad, bad time. So <laughs> Yeah. And then you think about it, like if you get a $600 couch, that's another, it's like 10% sales tax yep. on that baddie. So you, you know, another, so you get a couple grand of furniture and you already 200 extra bucks. It just, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a lot. So, <laughs> um, yeah, these are things that we think about yeah. for sure. Yeah. This, this but, is, this is growing up, man. <laughs> Having those kind of conversations but, is growing up. Right. It's awful. It's awful. But <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, Japan trip. That's really Japan trip. That's very exciting. Uh, yeah, I assume you can talk about that somewhat because that's already been kind of locked in. Oh no, 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 no! I, I, I can talk about it a bit. So I, um, I got invited. So I did some writing sessions with an incredible, incredible writer, uh, Casper, who is just an ungodly wizard <laughs> writer mm -hmm. and he calls himself not a singer, but this guy is a beast of a singer. Dang. It's always the people who are like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not really a singer. And then he goes, da, da, da. Oh my God. My back thing. Oh, that was a bad move. Yikes. I can't <laughs> even, Oh, that inhale hit yeah. me right in the back, right rib cage. <laughs> Holy crap. I got to figure that out later, but yeah. Um, did some writing sessions with Casper and I feel very humbled that he was not only so complimentary, but then, you know, it asked if I wanted to join him on his writing trip to Japan. So he writes and does a lot of work and put, put it, don't quote me on this. I mean, you know, I, I will just say, I do not know if this is fully true, but he, I believe he does majority or near exclusively K and J pop, uh, wow. you know, work, uh, I, I don't I haven't known him that long. So and he's done this a long time yeah. since like before K pop was called K pop. Mm -hmm. Like it was just Korean. I don't pop know what music, it's called for K pop. Music but. from Korea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have wh whatever it was yeah. called back then. He, that's how long he's been doing it. Um yeah. So he, he invited me to join him on the trip. I'm gonna be joining him for a, a chunk of his sessions and um just sitting down with, with people and I'm making hits for j-pop radio that'll so be sick dude it's gonna be really a ton of fun it feels like i'm not gonna lie kind of doesn't feel real it is real i have the tickets i have the hotel it's happening i uh, it is happening but <laughs> it doesn't feel real until i'm there in the session and it's going and it's happening yeah, yeah. i yeah. i do feel like your so, uh your vocal 
stack stylings really will lend itself extremely well to a J and K pop type yeah, thing. They, and, and they really like the, they really like having an American, purely American pop person in the room. So a lot, the rights that I've done with Casper, you know, by nature of what I do, I bring the American pop mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, that that's kind of the particular sound that they want to infuse in. You're the token American so, guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I I've I've been looking to be the token something, yeah. and I've, I haven't been the token minority my whole life. So just ginger. It's nice to. <laughs> yeah, and, and even then, and I'm, even I'm then. a I'm a pretty pretty fire pretty fire looking. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, we're we're cool with it. Yeah, but yeah. So I mean, that that's it really. It's just gonna go to Japan, write a bunch of songs, head back home. And uh, it's gonna be wild. Uh, it doesn't feel real yet, but yeah, that's really. I'm, sick. I'm honored to have been invited to be trusted to come into the rooms that he he's going into it yeah. is something I, I don't take lightly at all. And just prepping to have a lot of instrumentals ready to go to uh, blow some socks off when we so, when we sit down. So I was gonna say that's a really good segue into maybe uh, talking about how you prep for some of your writing sessions and things like that. Um, so how are you nowadays prepping for like? A larger writing session or maybe something are you coming with instrumentals are you coming with ideas are you or does it really depend on the right it can really depend on the right i think like the j-pop trip there's no like the briefs are so fast turnaround Mm -hmm. that we won't know if that maybe there's a specific brief you need to fill till like Mm -hmm. probably me flying out and and then we'll just kind of know what the direction is. So that I just kind of have a handful of different things that feel singly potentially. Yeah. And then we kind of see what's Some up. starting points. Maybe half the time we'll use something in the pocket. And then half the time it, it just, we just kind of start with something else. Like we sat down with uh, Ryan Lewis, me, Casper and Ryan Lewis, not Macklemore. I it, the other Doja Cat, Ryan yeah. Lewis. Yeah. 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 yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, no, because yeah, I, I know it who to you're my talking mom, about. Like, a lot of other people might not know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, mom, I'm like, no, it's it, yeah, it's it's another one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think spelled the same too. Okay, yeah. I don't know, what, I, whatever. So we sat down in that sitting down to write us three. I obviously had a bunch of stuff in the pocket. I played, um, I played maybe five or six things, and there was a bunch of great starting ideas that just kind of started flowing. But then, you know, we were like, well what about something like this Harry Styles song is just as far as energetically and yeah. Ryan picks up the guitar. First idea that comes out, boom, the verse is done three minutes later. And it's like, well, let's run with this. Yep. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so, good. so it's kind of a balance of like a lot of times when it's an open brief of like, let's just make something dope. Yeah. Then we, it's 50, 50, but a lot of times when I'm writing for an artist, like with the artist, I, t- I try to come in like, maybe two or three things that I feel really strongly could be a really good starting loop or four bar built out something yeah. for them. Um, but I'm noticing the less I have, the better. Like, yeah, I don't tend to go beyond 16 bars, like eight bars, eight bars. Yeah. That's it. Like a verse, under bake it a little like bit. A verse feel and maybe like the start of a course feel or something like that. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Like, and, and then let, let them kind of fill in the rest and the energy fill in the rest. Um, everything from that down to like maybe a loop or something. So Mm -hmm. if I haven't, um, yeah. So I'll I'll take a listen to the references, try to understand where they're coming from. And then the other times too, I just know I don't have anything for them in my catalog. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to work quick. Yeah, exactly. And I love the pressure. Exactly. But the difference is like, so I sat down with, with this dark, like really dark pop artist. And I, she didn't kind of know where she wanted to go either with this new direction since her, her label deal was done. And she just described some stuff. And I, the other art as a producer is just knowing like what sounds to touch, Mm -hmm. what, what can you just get that, that fire out of somebody. And so she's talking about big cinematic stuff. So I just pulled up like a scoring library with a bunch of Brahms. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, she's like, (sighs) yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm like, great. Okay, cool. Let's start here. Yeah. 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 So the, uh, the other art is like, I don't know where this is going, but I'm going to 
but I have enough knowledge of my tools to move quickly mm -hmm. based on what they're showing up with creatively that day. And that's kind of the thought like to be able to cut something together in 30 minutes. That's exciting enough to inspire mm -hmm. writing too. And yeah. then I can mute the drums and call it a verse for now and then put the drums in and know it's a, a chord. <laughs> like, yeah. I think, oh, oh, you want different chords? Okay. Here's a basic synth. Yeah. Great. I Done. think people, let's, I let's go. think, and this is a whole separate conversation that we're not going to go into because it'll take another hour, but a, um, there's a level of speed that I think is not un fully understood by people that have not experienced that level of speed that is necessary for a right. You should be able to, and then I've experienced this too, and I'll give this example and then we can kind of move on. But um, sitting in a right with somebody and then as they're writing, me as the producer, like, and I'm building the track as like maybe the writers are writing, right? Um, and like I'm working on the verse and they're writing to it while they're working on the verse. I'm building out what I think should be the, how the next course section to go. So by the time that they even get to the course, I'm like, all right, here's my idea for the course. Keep writing, stay in the zone, never leave the pocket, you know, like keep that energy going yep. while you're going while, while they're moving. And yeah, but to be able to have that sort of speed takes time, a lot of time and a lot of experience. Um, but yeah, <laughs> That that's a whole nother tangent. I'm sure me and you could go on about a bunch of different things. Um, but I'm trying to be cautious of your time. So as we're kind of moving into our last little uh section, kind of did a recap, some random stuff about what's going on with you right now. Uh let's talk about a little more specifics. John, what is something that you've done? Can be production, can be mix but some sort of technique that you're just like really pumped on right now. <sighs> that gets you excited. Also go one eye. Also go one. Yeah. Also go question. I, um, I don't know why I did the accent, but <laughs> you know, shout out to shout out to all my UK friends yeah. that, that found that absolutely despicable. Yep. So I think something I'm doing a lot recently is, just just stacking a bunch of different saturators and like not giving a fuck and usually liking what that's doing yeah a lot and it ends up being like the first 20 percent and then the last 20 percent to get something to work <laughs> like i usually think it's enough and then i come back later and then i can listen on my phone and i'm like it's not enough and then <laughs> and then the and then i just like add more at the end of the chain um so it's been like way more like three or four saturators and like no soothe if I can get away with it. So just really honing, trying in to do like a lot more style of saturation and make sure it's not over harshing anything. Um, well, more, more to say like the saturations doing a lot of the taming that I would want mm. out of soothe. Gotcha. Understood. And you're yeah, regulating a lot of that, like kind of coldness, mm -hmm. the way that the transients kind of poke and aren't kind of smoothed out. Um, so try, yeah, really trying to at all costs avoid adding soothe until yeah. I'm like literally out of ideas. Like I, yeah. I physically cannot find <laughs> anything another else. fucking way to, to take care of this fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and then I add soothe. And then you add soothe. Um, and then it fixes it. <laughs> yeah. Then, and that's like the probably the appropriate point in which to, to exactly. add Exactly. Agreed. Um, the other, maybe the other big thing too is. Getting a little more discriminate about like where I pan each part of a vocal stack because it's just it just hugs you a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of kind of caring about that fanning out of the cards, you know, the, the deck of yeah. cards where everybody's placed. That's been really really nice. Um, and then I think God, I, I don't do that much of crazy. Sh well, that's funny. I guess I do, but like, yeah, I, I want to. Pe people would disagree. I want to double down on the panning thing. I think I've recently really learned about the uh, the particularness and the how well something can sit in like the twenty to thirty five percent range sometimes. Like as far as like left and right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to go full one hundred all the time. Just like having something just like slightly off center can feel really good like having something mono and slightly to the left can be a game changer on like just a, how something sits 
Yeah, that it's it's. I love how we're both experiencing like the same yeah. production arcs. I feel like at the same time yeah. where we're like, wow, sometimes you can just leave it right there and just like wiggle it to the left a bit. And it's great. That's kind of, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, it's just, that's just beautiful. And it does the job. Like, like that's, that's very much, we're, we're very much experiencing the yeah, same like creative arcs for sure. of, of like adult, like adulthood arcs. Yeah. We're almost. growing into like, um, oh, it's the stuff that like people have told you that were old heads when you're starting out and you understand but then once you f- actually understand it you're like oh okay i get i get why that's important yeah it's nice <laughs> yeah it's a really nice spot to be yeah i also now now i'll give you some wild shit okay. so <laughs> th- yeah th- this is stuff you know i know people people want to hear about this stuff um little altar boy is cool but the melodining if you're gonna go up an octave do it in melodyne Interesting. I've I just like I how don't it, like. Uh, I just like how it sits better. I don't like. Uh, I don't like Alter Boy for big sweeps of things. I've noticed that recently. Uh, like like so low octaves is fine, but high octaves it does something to my stereo field. I've noticed. Uh, oh yeah, it, it's re- it'll like just kind of say fuck it about ten seconds into yeah yeah uh, <laughs> playback on a mono source and just yeah. kind of widen it yeah yeah. And then I just have to collapse the panning in and just be like, all right, well, now it's mono. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's been a crazy little hack is just put that bitch in Melodyne. Wait, hold up. Can can I can I reset? Yeah. I don't want I, I'm trying to get rid of, of female based derogatory terms. Go for it. Unless I'm speaking to my partner, I'll cut it. in which case, you know, required. Yeah. Um just kidding, Michelle. I love you. <laughs> so um yeah, it's just so much smoother yeah. in Melodyne when I pull it up an octave, print it out. It pres- because Meldon works so hard to be super natural. Yeah. And then I like just controlling the, f- maybe just controlling the format and Alter Boy or like Avox throat. But I'm also like, to be transparent, I'm cooling on auto tune as a bundle. So I'm, it's, it's, I, I love so much of what it does. And at the same time, thank you for the perpetual uh, everything license. And at the same time, uh, I don't use enough of the plugins. To, to really need the say bundle. Say I would justify it for somebody yeah. to get. No, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's like a fun thing. Yeah, like melodining it up an octave and then it's like, oh, ha, but this is when also your shit tuning comes out too. Mm-hmm. I feel like when, it, when you go into melodyne and you yank it up, I feel like it's so good at being natural. I feel like I hear problems. I've really enjoyed uh, Melda Auto Pitch. It's a free plug. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta fuck with that. It's re- The form it's on it, I love it more actually. I love the format shifting on it because it does some really wacky stuff too. It also has whatever the widening algorithm on it. Um, you can put on synths and you put it in pentatonic mode and leave it chromatic. Uh, like, or so I put it in the key, put it on pentatonic mode, but leave it and uh, widen it. And it does some crazy stuff. Yeah. You're talking now. You're talking. I'm talking your speed as far as like sound design stuff goes, but it's crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm just out here just being like, wow, it's nice to pan, ain't it? And yeah, and then uh, this that's the stuff people want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, P- yeah, P- people want to hear widen just the pentatonic harmonics of your synth performance, yep. and narrow with a a, a transient <laughs> only in ozone 11 yep. the harmonic excitement for your mi- high mids <laughs> exactly to give it a squeezed orange juice exactly <laughs> the squeezed orange juice um, this is not orange enough <laughs> i need more juice <laughs> i haven't i haven't heard that yet but you know i'll make sure to bring that <laughs> that's very there you giggle. go there you go uh lastly last thing as we're kind of landing the plane um we like to find out about some new music here on the podcast uh so i'm gonna ask you for two recommendations john two uh i'm gonna need one there's something that you've been listening to that you've been really stoked on and oh wait do you want me to do that okay yeah, yeah. are you gonna say both because i'm pulling up my spotify yeah okay. go ahead go ahead and pull up your spotify number one something that you've just been really stoked on can be new old popular not doesn't matter just as long as you're excited about it and the second thing is something that you think is underrated that people need to be listening to. Okay. Right now, Irresponsible by Emmy, E-M-E-I. I don't know how to say her name. Irresponsible by 
the artist with the name E-M-E-I. Great track. So catchy. I feel like it does everything I want forever. <laughs> it, it, I, which is which is like maybe that's a, a good that's answer. A bi- that's a big that's a big statement. I'm adding it to my library so I can listen to it. But yeah. So I also then just found like last night. Um, then the underrated answer would be "Puppy Love" L U V, "Puppy Love" by Sizzy Rocket S I Z Z Y Rocket. Uh, that it, I just. This is like like yesterday. So hot off the press. Yeah. I am in love with, with that song. I haven't listened to anything else of theirs yet, but I will very soon. Which, which song, which song, song was it? Puppy Love. Puppy Love. And then the, the old school heart with the lesson three. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Oh, yeah, it's new. Yeah, it's yeah. literally like within the last month. What can I say? I'm trendy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, we love... I'm working on building out like a big playlist for everybody's recommendations. So that it's basically like a place where you can go, I need something new to listen to. Here's a massive library Mm. of like weirdly wacky different stuff. So... uh, Fuck with it. Well, and like, I feel like... As, I feel like we don't have enough time to find new stuff sometimes as music producers and engineers. Uh, not all the time, at least. Um, sometimes we get burnout on like trying to find and listen to a bunch of music. And so mm-hmm. I find this to be an easy way, an easier way to help everyone kind of learn about new stuff. But yeah, uh, love it, dude. John, where can people find you? Where can people? Go watch your stuff, uh, what content you are making, and things like that. Go John underscore McLucas, J-O-H-N underscore M-C-L-U-C-A-S. That's TikTok and Instagram. That's probably where I'm most active. Um, Yeah, just go shoot me a DM. Say what's up. Say, send me a DM that says, hello. And then you have to. With the accent. Do the correct amount of O's and the shape it correctly. So <laughs> just however you interpret that, send me that DM and then I will send you one back. If that's the deal. Yeah, that's the deal. That's how you get the immediate follow. Is is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to follow back, if you yeah, these days, if you want me to follow back, yeah. I'm gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to send me that. Yeah. Uh well, dude, thanks so much for coming and hanging out um on this pleasant Tuesday afternoon for me moving into afternoon for you you know uh dude i appreciate you a ton yeah it's great to see your face yeah, dude. don't see it enough i know I'm, I'm very stoked that you were able to come back on uh tell michelle i said hello and that uh we hope that you have good luck moving back to um los angeles because good luck with that um <laughs> thanks man because you know and uh yeah So thanks so much for coming on. Listeners, thanks so much for listening. Uh, We'll see you guys next time. See you.